What's good, football fans? You know, I wanted to come on today and talk about a player that I've had tons of people down in the comment box asking me about pretty much every single week, and that's Cody Barton. Now, before I start, let's just take a moment and remember that Barton was signed to a one-year, $3.5 million contract back in March. And that came after the Seahawks decided not to bring him back. You know, the, the same Seahawks team where he was drafted in the third round and played 65 games. Mind you, only starting 16, most of which were in 2022 because of injury, but whatever's whatever. But this season, he's played in all 338 snaps the defense has had. And let me just say this, never have I seen a player play that much but have issues showing up on the film like this guy does? Now that said, let's just dive right into this. Now this play right here was probably Cody Barton's shining moment so far as a Washington commander. This was the best play that he's been in on, or should I say that he's taken part in, and that's a nice little punch right there, a little peanut punch. So far, this is Barton's claim to fame in the Burgundy and Gold. And could this have been a big play? Sure it could have been, if we'd have been able to get the ball back. As you see, Barton is just, he doesn't have the instincts to, to react quick enough to be able to just jump right back on the ball right there. He has to take a couple of seconds before he reacts. And by the time he's done that, of course, Eagles lineman's already jumped on it and the play's over with. Here's a great example of Barton coming in and filling a gap at the exact moment that it was needed and forcing the running back to go to the outside, which he wasn't able to gain much yardage there at all. But as you see, as I was saying, he perfectly filled that gap exactly how they needed him to. And this could have quite easily been a four or five yard gain had Barton not done his job well there. Now this right here is probably the other bling on Cody Barton's stat sheet since he's been with the Burgundy and Gold right here that most people will probably see, and that's that recovered fumble right there. Now, of course, Jamin Davis made this play right here. As you see, he comes running in, grabs Russell Wilson, and Russ just leaves the ball on the turf right there. I'm still not sure what was going on in Russ's mind while why Russ didn't hop right back on that ball, but you know, as you see, Cody Barton was able to hop on it and get the ball back. Now, these right here are rare, but don't look now. This is Cody Barton hitting a quarterback. One thing that I noticed that Cody does well in his film, is he actually does crash down on, on runs like this. Now, the play is pretty much already made by the time he gets there, but it's, it's good to see a guy who comes in and does exactly what you need him to. Now, the problem, of course, is that I'm seeing a little bit of inconsistent play when it comes to that. I know if you look at Cody Barton's stats, you'll see a bunch of tackles there. The problem I have with that, in his film, and yes, I've watched every single piece of film this guy's got, there's a lot of it that's like this right here. With him coming in at the end of a play and tapping a guy down. Like, there's a lot of it just like that. I realize that that's still a tackle, but it's a little misleading. I think we all could agree on that. I'm going to call this play right here a clear business decision by Cody Barton. He gets ready to come to this side of the hole right here, and he sees that oncoming blocker coming for him, and he slows up just enough to let that blocker come by who smashes into his own man instead of Barton because he was thinking Barton was coming through that hole. And in that one little split second or whatever, the running back is able to get through that hole and be able to gain another, what is that, another five, six yards right there and a first down, I might add while Barton ends up missing the entire play just because he hesitated. Now, if you're thinking, oh, well, that's a smart decision so he doesn't get his bell rung, sure it is. As soon as he steps right through there and hit, makes that hit on that oncoming blocker, he could also try to move into what is becoming a big hole right there if he were to speed into that hit instead of what he did, which was slow down and get stuck in that hole. You watch it back from this direction right here, you see that Barton has the opportunity where he could just run through there. If he goes through there at full speed and hits that blocker, he could probably push him into that hole and make that running back cut back another direction. And then that whole play is, is completely different right there. I mean, if he's not quick enough to be able to make that play after sidestepping the block, then he shouldn't be attempting it right there because then he left that man to get another, like I said, five, six, seven, eight 
Shoot, almost nine yards right there. Same type play against the same team. Now, I'm not trying to say that Barton could have, you know, prevented a touchdown right here, but he damn should have could have tried to attempt it something on that. I mean, I don't want to get caught being nitpickish here, but I mean, he should have ran through this block and tried to clog that hole up instead of trying to, I mean, he ended up just slowing up and not trying to take a hit there. And the guy trying to block him basically missed, but then of course he was in no position to make any kind of tackle there. And the guy had a clear shot to the touchdown. From what I've seen of Barton, he's kind of hit or miss in coverage, but he's almost always slow to react to things. And it leaves him getting, you know, stuck out there in the middle of, of, of the field, not really knowing what to do or not knowing how to react in time. And then, of course, a couple seconds in the NFL, that's a lifetime. And I've already said in the past that sometimes it's it's not really a clear thought to think that these linebackers can, you know, follow these wide receivers in today's game, especially with all the rules they have. But this situation right here, there is absolutely no reason why Cody Barton should have been covering Judy right here against the Broncos. That That was just dumb to begin with. Very similar concept here going the other direction. Thankfully, Davis was on the end of this and was able to make that stop. I'd be the first one that admits, though, that part of this right here is the scheme, not just Barton's inability to be able to react in time. I remember seeing this play against Buffalo and thinking, oh, look, Barton made a good play on that. I can't wait to see that, you know, in, in better film. And then, of course, when I finally see it, I see that it wasn't really even Cody Barton really doing anything. It was just Knox not being able to put his hands on the ball in time. So I guess we can go ahead and cross that off as a, as a good play. But but Barton was able to keep up with him blow for blow, even though Knox probably should have made that catch and that should have been a touchdown. But look, guys, I'm not going to make some 30 minute long video that just completely tries to destroy this guy and say that he's the worst thing since whatever in free agency. Truth is, this guy is so mid that it's not even funny, man. His his level is medium. He's, he should never have been the guy that they brought in to play 100% of the snaps. Could he been a guy that's a decent rotational player? Sure. But I have talked on end about why are we not seeing Kaliki Hudson on the field? Why have we not seen them at least try Hudson in some of these roles that they have? They love this Buffalo nickel role. Kalik Hudson is made for that role. Everybody always tells me, well, he's not big enough to play, you know, out there all the time as the main linebacker. My thing is some of the best things Hudson does on the football field are some of the worst things that Cody Barton does. I mean, Cody Barton does not shed a lot of blocks, y'all. This guy gets manhandled just about like 80% of the time that somebody actually sets a block on him. So if the main argument is that Kalik Hudson is not big enough to be able to go out there and actually play the position. My response is gonna be, well, this guy isn't good enough to get off of blocks, so why the hell is he in? And I don't wanna be right about this, but you know, the whole situation is a bit frustrating. Like, how do you have uh, two former NFL linebackers who cannot get the linebacker position right? When Jamin Davis's contract comes up, they're probably not gonna you know, extend his fifth year option, and why should they if they did? But at least with Jamin, I'm able to say, well, there's upside there. You know, he he could do this. I could show you some film of Jamin doing some things and you could say, oh, well, you know, at least he's showing out. I can't do any of that with Cody. I will tell you that against the run, he does have his moments, but I can't get mad at him. He's getting paid like a mid-tier guy and that's what he is, a mid-tier guy. But if we're being completely realistic here, this type of player should not be seeing 100% of the commander's game day snaps, especially not if he's getting thrown around like a rag doll every time that he has to meet somebody and get blocked. I mean, <laughs> that's the main part of his job as a linebacker is getting off of blocks and making plays, making tackles. You know, I realize they want to use them a lot more in coverage, but he's not that great in coverage either. Now, so far this season, we have seen the man play 338 snaps and Hudson has been on the field for one. Honestly, I think this is all on the scheme. I think we're seeing massive scheme failure in front of us. But if the coaches are going to run this type of schemes, they should be putting the best players in the best spots. And if they're going to leave Cody out there on the field, at least play the man to his strengths. He's good against the run. Play him to his strengths, which is going to be kind of hard to do when you're spending like, what, like 80% of your time in nickel because you're worried to death about the opposing team's quarterback running for yardage against you or whatever the case may be. Now, I'm not going to sit here and try to pretend that I'm on the cutting edge of what all the sub packages are in the NFL at the current moment, but I'm going to let you know that <laughs> the guys that we got over there calling plays are somewhat dinosauric at this point. Del Rio and Rivera need to get their shit together. This season is still salvageable, but it has to happen now. There's no waiting. 
And if you've been brainwashed by the foolery that this whole complete scheme has been feeding to us all you have to do is stop and look around the league and see what the linebacker position is doing for other teams go look at the 49ers and see what the linebackers are doing for that team i know i know different scheme different setup different coaches everything right that's my point i've seen enough of cody barton to know that he is not the guy that this team is looking to wear that green dot on the back of his helmet this guy is exactly what he is he is the broke man's cole holcomb Ron Rivera said, how can we get a player that we could shove into this spot right here and try to make work for the least amount of money and Cody Barton's name popped up out the machine? That's no knock on him. They're just trying to make more of him than he is. Simple as said, let's hope whoever's making the draft picks in next year's draft looks at this position with a little bit of weight to it. Because while it's not the number one need offensive tackle is, it damn sure is the second. Let me know what you guys are thinking down in the comments and do me a favor and hit that thumbs up for you guys leave. And if you hadn't already, make sure you hit subscribe. YouTube already does a bad enough job of notifying everybody when videos come. So if you want to reach up there and hit that bell, you can, but I'm not guaranteeing nothing with them. That is the only way that you could somehow think in the back of your mind, oh, I'm going to get all those videos, you know, in my notification section, but it don't always work like that. Y'all take it easy. Peace.